Dear fellow truth seekers, thank you and welcome for visiting my channel, Mitha Religio. Mitha Religio is a video channel based on a book series with the same name about religious comparison studies between the stories in Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, and Buddhism, directly from their sacred books and world mythologies, hence the name Mitha Religio. The purpose is to retrace the prehistory of humanity, since I'm not fully satisfied with either the explanations from the point of view of creationists nor evolutionists. There are so many missing links in both explanations. If you feel the same, then you are on the right channel. In this channel, I will also analyze about the prehistory of humanity from the archaeological records, modern scientific point of view, and other alternative theories such as the ancient alien theories and Atlantis or Lemuria legends. After thorough research of circa 30 years, I recognize many, many similarities between all religious stories and even mythologies, and surprisingly, some of them are in accordance or even beyond modern science that have been proven as correct. Thus, I came to the conclusion that all religions must have come from the same source, and all these religious stories and mythologies, although heavily jumbled up, are actually telling one mega story, the true prehistory of our common ancestors. This mega story is quite different than what we have been told to believe and will truly blow your mind as it is more fascinating than our imagination. If you have watched the earlier videos in this channel, I believe you can see some of the similarities too. If you haven't and you truly want to do a religious comparative study, I suggest that you do so. The best way to do a comprehensive religious study via this channel is by watching the videos starting from number one and continue until this present video and so on. That way you will see a clear pattern. In this channel, I will share almost all that I have written in my book series. However, there is one book so far that I cannot share in this channel due to its sensitive, shocking and dark nature and also might be considered controversial to some, but I believe it sheds more light to the above conclusion. If you want to read this around 500 pages ebook with many full color illustrations, you are more than welcome to download book number 5 entitled History of the Dark Side that is available for free in ebook format that can be found in my website www.mythorology.com You only have to give your email address and it will be sent to you directly. And no, I won't share your email address nor send any advertisement. The link is in the description box. If you want to get the physical book, kindly go to amazon.com Now let's continue with this week's video. Video number 73 From Mythorology Book 3 Science versus Religion DNA is a language Dear fellow truth seekers, For the last few weeks I have shared with you the scientific theories on the origin of life, i.e. the theory of evolution and the Big Bang Theory, for our religious versus science comparison study. I did this in order to find answers to the questions that are not answered satisfactorily by religion. This will be the last video to conclude how the theory of evolution is actually very hard to defend. In video number 62, we have learned that according to this theory, evolution happened due to mutation. Every mutation is an accident and either damages the nucleotides making up the DNA or changes their locations. Most of the time, they cause so much damage and modification that the cell cannot repair them. However, according to the evolution theory, there are advantageous mutations that can cause evolution. Furthermore, as analyzed in video number 62, there are no examples of such mutations. In this video, I would like to share with you further how not only there are no examples of such mutations, but actually, DNA is much more sophisticated than we previously thought making it even more improbable for evolution to take place due to mutation. 
DNA is a language. One of the important keys to understand the process of evolution through mutation is to understand how DNA works. DNA contains all the information needed to build our bodies, determines things such as our eye color, gender, height, etc. Half of the DNA in our bodies came from our mothers and the other half from our fathers. How does DNA work? DNA is a molecule, i.e. a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. When it divides to multiply, it separates in half and the complementary chemical falls into place at every station and creates a new replica of itself. The structure of the DNA molecule itself is identical among all living things, from an amoeba to a 150-ton whale, from a blade of grass to a redwood tree. It consists of sugar, phosphate, and four nitrogen bases, adenine or A, thymine or T, guanine or G, and cytosine or C. A sugar, phosphate, and base together constitute a nucleotide. The four bases are paired on the DNA molecule in a very specific way. A always with T and G always with C. Connecting the base pairs are alternating sugar and phosphate units, forming a structure that resembles a ladder. The ladder is actually three-dimensional. It takes the form of two strands twisted into a long spiral, the famous double helix. A, C, T, and G encode all information necessary for life. In the simplest tiny microorganisms, it takes 500,000 letters to represent a living organism. It takes 500,000 A's or C's or T's or G's. In a human, it takes 3 billion of those letters to represent a copy of a human. And there is one of those 3 billion letter messages inside every cell in our bodies. By the way, modern technology, to date, has not produced an information storage mechanism that is denser than DNA. All the information in our computer hard drive is a lot bulkier than the information in our cells. So, DNA is not just a molecule. DNA is a language. Language is a symbolic representation of something else. Language is needed to convey a message or a command, like a computer language. It is actually very comparable to English and human languages in the way that it is structured. How is it that this molecule, consisting of only six basic components, four bases, a phosphate and a sugar, can contain all the information required to make almost a million types of animals and nearly a half million species of plants? Let us think of DNA as the totality of information needed to reproduce any organism. It is, in a manner of speaking, a language. For a simple illustration, let's compare DNA as a cookbook. The recipe in the cookbook tells the readers exactly how to cook a dish. Cookbook contains a combination of words, letters, and paragraphs, which are all combinations of only 26 letters in English. In fact, every English book in the world consists of only 26 letters, but with the language grammars and rules, the combination of these letters and the meaning these letters can convey are limitless. Another example is the binary code used in computer processor instructions, which is only using two digits, 0 and 1. Here is the structure of DNA compared to human language. Nucleotide bases, i.e. the A, T, C, and G, are comparable to letters. Codons are comparable to words. Genes are comparable to sentences. The DNA is comparable to a book. DNA is encoding the coding mechanism that stores and transmits the message of the living organism. Biologists have actually been using linguistic analysis to decode the human genome, the complete set of genetic material of an organism. So, what makes a language? The first thing about a language, 
any language is it symbolically represents something other than itself. For example, a book consists of papers and ink. But the message in that book has nothing to do with paper or ink, for the most part. Paper and ink are just the mediums that carry it. To have a language, to have information, you have to have a transmitter and a receiver. Somebody has to talk and somebody has to listen. And then it has these four characteristics. It has an alphabet, it has grammar, it has meaning and it has intent. Every language has those four things. DNA has them. DNA is an encoding and decoding system. DNA molecule represents more than itself. It represents an entire living organism. It doesn't just represent Adam in. DNA represents a human being, a rabbit, or a squirrel, or a snake. It has alphabet and syntax and semantics and pragmatics. Or to use less technical terms, alphabet, grammar, meaning, and intent. It can be copied and even stored in other media with no loss of information. The pattern of DNA is not like a language. It is a language. Information cannot be created without intent. There are no examples of information that is created without intent. So the question now, where does the language of DNA came from? Because all codes, all languages, all encoding, decoding systems come from a mind. No exceptions. Can copying error create better sentences? Darwin predicted that the fossil record would show a gradual and steady progression from simple to complex forms of life. It is now well known that what we see instead is long periods of stability interrupted by sudden changes. For example, dinosaur reptiles suddenly replaced by mammals. Evolutionist biologist Stephen Jay Gould called this punctuated equilibrium. We are told that although mutation is most of the time harmful, but occasionally it's helpful, and from these mutations come all kinds of perfectly functioning species. Mutation is a change in DNA. Mutations can happen because of errors that occur during DNA replication. In other words, according to the evolution theory, the corrupted data can occasionally turn out to be beneficial instead of harmful. Is this possible? Let's see the following example. If we start with a sentence, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog, and randomly mutate the letters, we get sentences that look like the following. I can't even pronounce them, so I'm freezing the screen for a while in order for you to read them. We can apply all the natural selection to this in the world, and we'll never accomplish anything besides destroying a perfectly good sentence. Why doesn't this work? Because it is impossible to evolve a sentence one letter at a time, even if we deliberately try. Technically, this is because random mutation is noise, and noise always destroys a signal. The mathematician Claude Shannon called it information entropy, i.e. randomness. Entropy is not reversible. Noise never improves a signal, it only mucks it up. The only way for this to work is, evolution has to follow the rules of language. A word must be replaced by another word. So, successful evolution for this short sentence would look something like this. The fast brown fox jumped over the slothful dog. The dark brown fox jumped over the slothful dog. The big dark brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. The big dark brown fox ate the lazy cat. The big dark brown dog bit the lazy cat. In English, successful evolution requires precise substitution of verbs and nouns and following the rules of speech. DNA is no different. DNA has its own language. In fact, thousands of linguists have made huge contributions to the Human Genome Project by helping to decode the layers of the genetic code. Dozens of linguistic books describe the eerie similarity between DNA and human language. So now we are back again to the same question. 
Can this happen by chance? If not, who is replacing the command using the language of DNA? Decoded DNA would reach to Moon. BBC News on November 2003 reported that pioneering scientists in the UK have decoded a record-breaking 2 billion letters of DNA that has been revealed. The researchers at the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute say that if DNA was scaled up to the size of a spiral staircase, it would stretch to the moon. The life code found in cells contains information about biology, health and disease in humans and other organisms. It is the genes written in the DNA that dictate the diseases we are likely to get and how we respond to treatment. Amazing, isn't it? Questions. Where does this information come from? Could something as amazing as this create itself by accident? Dear fellow truth seekers, to me there are more than enough evidence to disprove the validity of the theory of evolution. If you wonder why this theory is still taught in schools and universities, I suggest that you read my fifth book, Mythology, History of the Dark Side, that can be downloaded for free in my website. The link is in the description box. Does this mean that religion is correct, that life on Earth, and anywhere else for that matter, if there are life other than on Earth, was created by a supreme intelligent being? Based on the lack of evidence in the theory of evolution, I would say yes. Does this necessarily prove that God exists? Is there only one God, or are there plural gods? And which religion are we talking about? On the other hand, there are so many missing links and hard-to-believe stories in religions that we have studied in this channel so far too. Therefore, I think it is time for us to continue with our search for truth by studying other alternative theories concerning the prehistory of life that do not belong to religious teachings and are not accepted by conventional science. I have collected the information of such alternative theories in my fourth book entitled Mythorelligio, Alternative History of the World, Ancient Astronaut, Atlantis, and Devolution Theories. I will begin sharing that book up from next week. But for now, allow me to thank you for watching and hope to see you next week.